Were those hawk shells that paid you working for the mother world? I don't like bounty hunters. I didn't ask. And to be clear, I don't like bounty hunters either. So you're a gun for hire? No, that's not my thing. I'm more of an opportunist, you might say. A real hero, huh? Wait! Look, I heard you in there, trying to get to Pollux. I could help you. Oh, I understand we're just simple farmers. We're searching for soldiers for a fight against the mother world. We have some money, but this is not the one you get rich on. I understand. Still, pay me what it's worth to you. That's a clip from uh, Rebel Moon Part 1. Delighted to say I've been joined by its director, co-writer, and its director of photography, who is Zack Snyder. Hello, Zach. How are you, sir? I'm great. How are you? Thank you for having me. Did I miss any of your producer as well? Did I miss anything else out of that list? I think I have a story by credit, but that's fine. Okay. <laughs> Just <right>. kidding. <laughs> uh, so Rebel Moon Part 1, A Child of Fire, uh, is, is the full title. Introduce us... Zach, if you would, to this brand new world which you have created. Tell us Yeah, about I was inspired by a lot of these um, films that sort of shaped me in the late 70s and early 80s. And this kind of science fantasy um, that really blew my mind and kind of made me want to like make movies for one and just kind of, you know, what this impossible world that's out there, this massive, you know, like when you see, I remember seeing the... Um, the trailer for Empire Strikes Back and just thinking like, what the heck? Um, and so it was like a lot of that stuff. And as well as, and I've said this famously, but the, you know, this um, adult illustrated fantasy magazine called Heavy Metal that I was a huge, um, that I subscribed to and that was shaped a lot of sort of my aesthetics uh, as a child and as a young teen and as an older teen, I guess. And even the animated version of that, you know, the animated heavy metal movie that they made, um, was really also um, Star Blazers, you know, the animated series that was a big influence, um, and on and on. But but really, yeah. uh, that's that's the world you're going to sort of dive into. So so sp- specifically, your idea of the Rebel Moon and the characters on that Rebel Moon. How far back are we going? Because is is it like your student days in Pasadena? Is that where the story starts? I mean, I. I think I've said that, yeah, there was a, I had a pitch class in Pasadena at my, at Art Center. And I said, I think I said something about, you know, it's a combination of Dirty Dozen, Seven Samurai, and uh, Star Wars in space. And um, I remember sort of pitching it that way. And my teacher going like, that's, that's good. That's a good, actually, that could, that could be good. And uh, thinking, um, I wonder if that's true. But anyway, that stayed with me uh, as a concept, you know, through the years. That it became, it was a, maybe going to be a video game. It was going to be, uh, it was a lot of things. Then it was, I pitched it famously as a Star Wars film. And then after the sale uh, to Disney, it came back to us. And then we were going to make it into a TV show. And then finally, I was like, let's just make a movie because I know how to do that. So... Um, that's kind of what it, that's what it ended up as. Two movies. And it, was it always was it, yeah? Was it always going to be a two parter? You know, uh, I wrote a two hundred page script, um, a little over two hundred pages, and so I didn't know one hundred percent how to. I do. I did know how to shorten it, but I didn't really want to. And I had the idea to to just kind of break it in half and turn it into two movies. And and Netflix was like, "That's a great idea. Let's do that." So and and just explain why you went with. Netflix, what was it about that? I know you've worked with them before, Army of the Dead and so yeah. on, but what was it about what they offered you for this project that made you think that would be the best place for yeah, it? Yeah, it, it was a few things. Well, I just finished Army of the Dead um, that I had done for them, and um, it was an incredible sort of creative experience working with them on Army. Army is a weird movie. It's a weird idea. Zombies in Vegas, you know, it's whatever, you know, you can't. But they but they loved it from the beginning and they were really um, encouraging, creatively encouraging and free, let me kind of do my thing. And then when we finished that movie, I said, you know, we can either do a sequel to Army or, uh, hear me out, uh, I have this idea for this sort of original IP, crazy sci-fi movie that's two-parter and it could be like more. Like, what do you guys think? And they were very like incredibly enthusiastic and very encouraging of the concept, frankly, that this could be not only two movies, but possibly more. And they said, yeah, we would love for you to try and make that happen. And so uh, I went to work creating this world and they've been incredibly supportive. 
And you you mentioned original IP uh, there in your answer. So yeah, well, I, I wonder mean, how. Yeah, I guess. Well, I, mean, I just think you know, having having worked with lots of projects where which was not original IP, where there were comic books and there were other movies and there was canon which you had to refer to to begin again with a budget from Netflix must have felt enormously liberating. Exactly, and I think that even just this movie, um, original sci-fi universe, scratch built is a difficult proposition, I think, for the normal studios right now, you know, as a, just as a concept, you know, it's, it's, it's not based on a book or a movie or anything. You just have to trust that it's going to be cool. And I think that that's a difficult, um, you know, proposition for the, for the major studios right now. But for Netflix, they, they were very much um, like, let's do it. This is like very enthusiastic. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. While you're here, check out all the other videos because they're cool too, aren't they? Yeah, and if you want to keep up to date with everything Kermode and Mayo's take, then check out our social channels. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, I, I would. I have done. Excellent.